Hey blog fans, it is Raymond again, back to provide another nine minutes of riveting narration to the conclusion of the thrilling two-part existing conditions saga to my house. Um, by the end of this, we'll have pretty much all of the existing conditions in, uh, all the important stuff anyway. Um, uh, right now, you can see there, um, setting up all of the existing wall types. Um, what I've got is, uh, what I did was go through the house, take measurements everywhere I could, and make my best guess as to what the composition was. The interior walls are easy. I got plaster on studs, uh, either flat studded or full studded. Um, the exterior, uh, also pretty easy. I've got concrete block on the inside, brick on the outside and uh, at least in the basement and on the first floor I've got uh, two by four wood studs and brick on the outside. Um, so uh, going through here I'm changing all the wall types making sure uh, I've got them all where they need to be. Um, I've got one last on the first floor you'll see it little niggling uh, dimensional discrepancy that won't go away in the bedroom area but it's not super super important so I'm gonna continue to ignore it and um, maybe even turn the dimensions black so it's like they've gone away um, let's see uh, I think by now um, I've got all of my walls uh, partitioned away uh, that, that was a weird phrase I don't know why <laughs> That doesn't even make sense. You can see in the in the um, elevation view up there in the top right, I'm doing what I said, what I promised I would do at the la end of the last video, which is making sure all of the heights are the same, and uh, and that's the last of the elevation views. Um, like I said, pretty boring. It just got supplanted by section view, which is going to be way more exciting just wait and see uh, right in here um, fleshing out all of the information that I know about the ceilings <coughs> uh, I've got a little HVAC bulkhead there and um, what uh, I prefer to do for ceilings is make the ceiling just the finishes um, the other way to do it is to have the ceiling thickness comprise all of the structure as well. I'm throwing in the steel beam there now. That's pretty cool. W8 by, uh, I forget, 21, I think. Um, found that on the Google. Uh, uh, the other way is to incorporate the thickness of the structure in the ceiling, but um, the problem with that is you don't get to decide where the stud locations or the joist locations for the ceiling are um, when you do that. So I think uh, what I've done is made uh, the ceiling just a plaster ceiling and put it against studs. A little behind the scenes there. Um, I've also created um, two walls in the basement. The first is the outside uh, block and brick that I described. The second is furring strips and whatever the finish is. It's either wood paneling or horrible fake river stone. And what that'll let me do is in the future I can say just demolish the inside wall without having to create an entirely new um, exterior wall type. That's thinking ahead. Uh, what you can see now, what I did was I created a hole in the first floor to make way for the staircase from the basement to the first floor. Um, stairs are, they require some trial and error, <laughs> at least on my part. Um, you can see me opening the menus a lot, changing the riser height, because it's not a, a two-code stair. I think I've got a nine-inch <coughs> riser and uh, only like a nine-inch run. Uh, you can see that it's dang near 45 on the way up. Um, so I had to tweak those a little bit. Um, it's not 100% important to me to um, 
have the stair. You can see it in the section up there. It's not what it looks like. There's probably a central s stringer, maybe. I don't know. It's not important. I'm not going to be messing with the stair. Trust me. I'm putting in the ceilings on the first floor now. Um, I think the last thing I did in the basement was, yeah, see, there's the worm's eye view in the 3D down there. Um, a little late to the party. I should have put in the ceilings after I did that, but didn't. So, sorry, you missed out. It was a lot of action going on. Um, what, <laughs> what I'm doing here is uh, throwing down switches and outlets. Um, that's not always... Uh, you don't always do that for existing conditions drawings because I, th I think of it like significant figures. If you record the location of one outlet and one switch, then it implies that you've recorded the uh, locations for all outlets and switches. Uh, ceiling bulkhead going on. Don't want to miss that. Um, all very exciting. <coughs> but uh, that's not always the case. And... Uh, you don't want to sort of fool yourself into thinking that you know more information than you do. So, but in my case, I can just walk 10 feet to see if I missed outlets or not and where their approximate locations are. So, um, it's okay. Plus, uh, I kind of want this to be sort of a living record of my house. So, what I'm kind of looking for, one of the ways I might use these outlets is... Um, to somehow record which circuit they're on in the drawing so that way uh, in the future if I want to make sure an outlet or um, a light is off I can not necessarily trust the information that's written on the circuit panel because that's always old and wrong and uh, just crack open the rivet because it's new and also wrong probably. Um, you can see that I'm putting in kitchen cabinets now. Revit ships with some really garbage families, just really, really bad. <coughs> uh, I think I've mentioned before that the, the doors don't, you can't change the angle on the swing of the doors, so at the entrance my closet and entry doors overlap annoyingly, and I have to create my own door families to uh, avoid that, or steal some from work. Um, and the same is mostly true with uh, base cabinets and other casework stuff. It's just not good. They've got these overlay panels, which actually sort of ap approximates my kitchen cabinets, but um, not always the case. And they're not easy to modify. They're just not good. Um, you have to really create your own families, which is its whole other animal. Um, there wasn't a countertop that didn't have a sink in it. Most countertops don't have sinks in it, so just another example of Revit families be by default not being great. The other thing that I'm already sort of falling into the trap in and that I'll probably do uh, when I'm not recording <coughs> is uh, fix how the components are recorded. Now, um, if you're not familiar with the Revit structure, there is windows, doors, and every other thing. This is where I didn't adjust the 3D view to see the bathroom, so... Again, you're missing out on some exciting stuff happening. Um, what I mean to say by that is that all of the casework is next to the light fixtures, next to the plumbing fixtures, is next to the everything else. And what ends up happening is base cabinets that start with a B are sort of in the same family as upper cabinets that start with a U, but since they're all in the same list, they're miles apart from each other, and it's really aggravating. And you've got refrigerators and furnaces in between. See, this is another reason that that louvered window didn't have a height adjustable. Just garbage. Anyway, this pretty much wraps up the existing conditions. I don't have terrain or a chimney, but I'm okay with that. Uh, because the next time you'll see it, I'll be able to do fun stuff like design.